Hello there. On behalf of Bethel Lutheran Church in Bay City, Michigan, welcome to this time of worship and praise. This video is for the 20th week after Pentecost. Jesus has kept his promise and has given the, the kingdom of God to us, to, to a people founded by, by faith and, and motivated by God's love. The grace of God leads us to, to produce the, the fruits that God seeks. The grace of God leads us to, to make every effort to, to bear the cross and serve for the sake of the kingdom. Let's begin. We make that beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this, I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us, and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace of that forgiveness, uh, let us praise the Lord using the hymn, Christ is our cornerstone. Israel is God's own vineyard, and he gave her everything that she needed. Like the vineyard, Israel lacks nothing. 
God took her from Egypt and, and planted her in the promised land. He drove out her enemies and, and made her secure. She had the law, the temple, the priesthood, the sacrifices, the prophets. What more could God have done? Yet when he comes to his people, when he comes to collect harvest, he doesn't always find fruit. In fact, sometimes God finds the opposite of his intention. When God looks for, for fruits of faith in our life and finds them lacking, couldn't he ask this question of us? What, what more could I have done for you? We pray that we might produce the, the fruits that our Lord seeks. We read Isaiah chapter 5, verses 1 through 7. Let me sing for my loved one a, a song about my loved one's vineyard. My loved one had a vineyard on a fertile ridge. He dug it up and gathered the stones out of it. He planted it with the best vines. He built a tower in the middle of it. He also cut a wine press into it. He expected it to produce clusters of sweet grapes, but it produced only sour grapes. So now, you residents of Jerusalem and you men of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more could have been done for my vineyard that I have not already done for it? When I expected it to produce clusters of sweet grapes, why did it produce sour grapes? And now let me tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge, and it will become a pasture. I will break down its wall, and it will be trampled down. I will make it a wasteland. It will not be pruned or hoed, so briars and thorns will shoot up. I will also command the clouds not to pour rain on it. Yes, the vineyard of the Lord of armies is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah are the planting that was pleasing to him. He expected justice, but instead there was oppression. He expected righteousness, but there was an outcry. This is the word of the Lord. Your friends in Christ, let us pray. Almighty God, in your bountiful goodness, keep us safe from every evil of body and soul. Make us ready with cheerful hearts to do whatever pleases you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We sing the hymn, Lord, keep us steadfast in your word. The next portion of the Bible for our hearing today calls for some careful hearing and some meditation. We read the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 33 through 43. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, 
put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. He leased it out to some tenant farmers and went away on a journey. When the time approached to harvest the fruit, he sent his servants to the tenants to get his fruit. The tenant farmers seized his servants. They beat one, killed another, and stoned a third. Then the landowner sent even more servants than the first time. Tenant farmers treated them the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenant farmers saw the son, they said to each other, This is the heir. Come, let's kill him and take his inheritance. They took him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. So when the landowner comes, what will he do to those tenant farmers? They told him he will bring those wretches to a wretched end. Then he will lease out the vineyard to other tenants who will give him his fruit when it is due. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures, The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. That is why I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces its fruit. This is the gospel of our Lord. Dear friends in Christ, we've had a, a somewhat warm fall so far. Not too long ago, the, the temperatures were, were close to the set 70s. But now, where we get that good chill at night, and uh, the real hard frosts, they're, they're coming. Gardens have, have all but stopped producing. And we'll, we'll have to wait until next year, unless we're doing something indoors, to, to really start growing again. And if you enjoy gardening, you, you look forward to that day next spring when, when you can finally turn over some land and, and get some things growing. But what if, after everything was set up just the way you wanted, you'd... You handed it over to someone who didn't really take good care of it. And he ended up with nothing. Days before our Savior went to the cross, Jesus told a similar story of, of a garden. But instead of a garden, he, he calls it a vineyard. He tells this story. He, he wants the, those that are listening to, to know that the Lord is paying attention. The Lord watches over his vineyard, his, his kingdom. He, he entrusts it to, to faithful farmers and those that he calls to faithfulness, and then he makes sure that its structure is sound. As Jesus tells this story, he, he describes a, a man who has some land and, and builds this vineyard, and, and this wasn't just kind of one or two grapevines off the back of the house. Builds a, a fence and, and a watchtower for protection. He, he puts in a wine press so he can do on-site processing. He does everything it needs. He, he provides for, for all of the, the things that are necessary. In reality, then the landowner is, is God the Father, and, and the vineyard he built was the nation of Israel. Provided them with everything they needed, the, the land, the resources, protected them from the, the false religions of other nations with the, the hedge of his laws. And even now, God, our, our Heavenly Father, provides everything his kingdom of believers needs. The landowner's only request was that those who were taking care of the vineyard give him a share of the harvest. But they weren't about to do any such thing. When he, he sent his servants, they, they didn't just close the blinds and, and kind of pretend that, that no one was home. They, they attacked and, and, and even killed some of those that were sent. And then when the landowner sends his own son, they, they reject him and, and kill him too, thinking that somehow they, they were going to gain from it. In the, the real world, in reality, people of Israel, leaders of the people of Israel, most of them had rejected again and again the, the prophets, the, the servants that God had sent to them, and in some instances did put them to death, just like in Jesus' story. Now they were plotting to take out the son. They were going to kill him, imagining that that spiritual leadership was going to remain theirs. How do we fit into that story? Well, without the faith-creating power of the Holy Spirit, we, we just as quickly reject God's Son. 
We, we still sometimes buy into the idea that, that putting God's Son either kind of off to the side or maybe even sometimes completely out of our lives is, well, somehow going to allow us to do something that's going to be good for us. Ultimately, every instance of sin is, is us snubbing God. Every lie and every hateful thought and, and every self-serving action says to God, I, I don't want your involvement in my life. I'll, I'll be better off on my own. And Jesus lets the Jewish leaders finish the story. He says, well, what's the landowner going to do? They tell Jesus that the, the landowner is going to destroy those farmers, take the vineyard away, and give it to someone else who's going to do what they're supposed to. And what they didn't recognize, or maybe perhaps didn't want to admit, is that they were giving a warning to themselves. A warning that if they continued to reject Jesus and follow through with their murderous plan, their, their work among God's people would, would really be done. And destruction was soon to follow. God's word finishes our story. The wages of sin is death. When, when we refuse to, to give to God his due obedience, we, we deserve nothing less than, than execution from God. But Jesus has also just described to us the, the long-lasting patience of God. The, the landowner sends multiple servants on numerous occasions. And even after they'd all been mistreated, he, he still sends his son with the hope that they might listen to him. God continued to, to send prophets until he sent the prophet, his son, with the hope that, that people would finally come around. But he did something so much better than to just give us chances to make it right on our own. I mean, because he has this, this never-ending love for us, and, and because he knew that unlimited chances really wasn't going to be the answer, because it didn't matter how many chances we had, we, we'd never get it right. The, the Son of God sent to us didn't come to, to collect the obedience that God deserved. He, he came to live the life that, that God demanded. He came to endure that the physical and, and spiritual execution headed our way. He came to open the doors of heaven to us by allowing the gates of hell to swing shut on him. God welcomes us into his heavenly kingdom, not because we do such a good job of obeying him, but because Jesus' love took him to the cross. So we, we want the Son to, to be constantly present in our lives, and, and we want to be faithful farmers. We, we have the desire to, to offer to God the, the fruit of our labors. And as Christians, our, our work on earth produces fruit for God. Whether we work out in actual fields or we run a business or simply punch a clock for someone else, our, our earthly labor gives glory to God when, when we do it from a heart of faith. It produces real tangible resources we, we can put to use for God and, and to give to him cheerfully. It serves as a, as a witness of, of how the gospel rules in our hearts. And it might just give us an opportunity to, to labor in helping God expand his rule in the hearts of beings, hearts of other people, with his love. Remember how the, the landowner made sure the vineyard had, had everything it needed? He, he built it and, and provided for its defense. God, God's also making sure that, that us, as his kingdom, that, that we're defended spiritually. He, he does it by making sure that the, the structure of his kingdom is sound, so that when, when enemies come and try to topple it, they, they can't. It's just, it's just built right. The whole thing, all of God's ruling activity in the hearts of believers, rests on Jesus. Having that foundation, then we have structure we need to, to stay safe. Our, our Savior Jesus, when he tells this story, knows that it's almost time for him to die, so he, he offers up some of these last words of warning. He, he points the, the Jewish leaders and, and us back to, to scriptures, back to Psalm 118. The builders, those who were part of God's kingdom, they, they rejected. They didn't want any help working in God's vineyard. And sometimes our sinful pride won't allow us to acknowledge that, that we need help either. We, we don't want to hear God's offer of help because then it means admitting that we, we couldn't do it alone. But as Jesus talks to them, that, that rejection proves devastating. Not, not only were the farmers destroyed, no, no one who followed them could, could make a claim to the vineyard because the, the landowner gave it to someone else. The Jewish leaders understood Jesus, but not quite perfectly. They, they understood that the kingdom of God was 
is going to be taken away from them, or at least that Jesus was saying that. Well, what they failed to understand was that rejecting Jesus meant that God was no longer ruling in their hearts, that, that God's kingdom really wasn't among them anymore. Could God remove his kingdom from us? Yeah. Jesus himself says, whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only son. The devil's working for that. He, he wants it to happen so that we, we end up bearing the, the same consequences he does. Little by little, he tries to, to get us to, to take forgiveness and, and salvation for granted. The, the more indifferent we become to, to the message of eternal life, the, the easier it is for some breeze of false teaching to, to blow us away from our Savior. Kingdom of heaven could be lost because of unbelief. But heaven is ours. Salvation is a gift that, that's been placed in our hands the devil can try all he wants to, to convince us to, to drop it in the dust, but, but he can't reach out and take it. It's ours. God's kingdom is solid and secure because it all holds together in Jesus. He's the cornerstone in the structure of God's kingdom. The lines to, to make sure the, the building is square and level, that's all Jesus' sacrificial death, his doubt-removing resurrection. They, they mean that, that we have the hope of heaven. And that, that hope can't be knocked down. When we build our spiritual life on Jesus, when God leads us to do that, we, we know that the structure is sound. Again, Jesus in the story says that the landowner is going to give the vineyard to those who are going to prove fruitful for him. He, he means that those who believe and, and are part of God's kingdom are, are just by nature, that's just what they do. They, they're going to produce fruit and they're going to keep on producing fruit. Uh, Apostle Paul helps us think a little bit about how the, the kind of fruit that we can offer. He, he says, if, if a man's gift is serving, let him serve. If, if it's encouraging, let him encourage. If it's contributing to the needs of others, let, let him give generously. If it's leadership, let him govern diligently. To, to thank God for his gift of salvation, we, we produce the, the fruits of faith that he desires. We, we use the, the other gifts then that, that come from him to benefit his kingdom. The Lord continues to watch over his vineyard. He built the structure of his kingdom on Jesus. He continues to give it everything it needs to survive and flourish. He's entrusted to us and, and called us to be faithful farmers. May the Lord lead us to, to always thank God by, by giving him the, the fruits that our lives of faith produce. Amen. And now may that peace of God, which goes beyond all human understanding, guard and keep your heart and your mind through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Having heard the word of our God, we confess Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, and descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, let us pray. Heavenly Father, our Creator, help us put to best use all our talents, abilities, creativity, and imagination in your service. Guide our thoughts and help us to embody your love. Inspire our speaking, sanctify our actions, and cause us to burn with zeal for you, who with the Son and the Spirit are one God, now and forever, and to whom we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, with sins forgiven, assured of eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, receive his blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for, for spending this time with us today. We, we pray that it equipped you and, and give you the, the, the confidence that, that you need to, and to follow our Savior and, and to serve him, knowing that everything's taken care of in Jesus and his cross. Check here again on Tuesday for our, our next piece of encouragement and, and learning from the, the book of Ecclesiastes. May the Lord bless your week. We, we close today with the hymn, I'm but a stranger here.